Matt and I are outside bright and early this morning. This is the big day. We're going to plant the rest of the garden. So Matt said we'd start with the beans. So we're going to start down here with our big long rows and we're going to mostly plant rattlesnake beans down here. These kind of last two pant quarters of the panel here, the little first part, we're going to plant some different beans on each of them. I'm not sure yet what, but, uh, but we're going to plant something. One of the ones that we're going to try, we're going to plant them right there. So we're going to get started. We're waiting on Corey, but we're going to go ahead without her. She's going to be here to help us later in the day, but she's going to do some things, other things for me this morning, like make uh, Miss Cindy something to eat and probably bring her to visit with Granny some. And we hope we'll even be able to get Granny's planted today. So we've got a, a big day ahead of us. So now the decision comes of what to plant. What's the experimental ones that we're going to plant? These back here, I know those are our rattlesnake beans and two kinds of bush beans. Our uh, Yance bush bean and then this one was from Debbie. Uh, John, let's see, Joanne Sutton, white bush bean. So we're going to, I'm going to plant those in different, I mean, I know those are going to be planted, but then I've got to decide what to plant in the other two, two little experimental areas. I've got so many, it's hard to, hard to think about what I want to plant. I'd like to plant them all. I wish I had two more big rows and I could just do a panel for each, but I don't. So I'm going to have to be um, I'm going to have to do, be judicious, I guess. I do definitely want to plant these. These are, look at that little, looks like a paint horse. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And these were from, uh, Mystery Cherokee Seeds from Sally Bradley. Those were from Debbie, though, but they come from Cherokee. So I definitely want to do them. And this time I'm going to be very good about actually marking what I plant. Thank you so much to the subscriber who sent me these, and then also a subscriber sent me some wooden ones, or some, um, where are they? Sent me these, and I've been using those already, already this year. We used those for the pepper. So I think on this one I'll put, let's see, mystery... I'm going to have to learn how to spell, it looks like. It's too hard to hold the camera and do it all. Corey's not here. And I'm going to put paint, just so I remember. It looks like a paint horse. So that one, definitely plant. Hmm. Just, I don't even have but a few of those, so I'll only be able to plant about three. And what else am I going to do? We definitely want to try the case knife. So we'll do that one. And then the, we've got the lazy wife. I wonder if that one is a greasy bean, a creature bean. And the Cades Cove Greasy, that's a Greasy. I might put those in the back, so maybe we'll do the Preacher up here. And then maybe we'll get those planted and then we'll see how far they go and then we'll come back and decide about any of these others. There's also the this one that we grew last year that Matt really loved that we need to grow. So we do have two more places though. I gotta remember that. Of course, I wanna grow peas on those and the lima beans, the butter beans. Okay, we'll start with this and then come back and see where we're at. A piece of old Appalachian folklore is that if you press in with your boot, leave your footprint on the beans, they'll grow better. So I have great memories of seeing Pap's boot prints. He didn't necessarily believe that, but he did do it. And then now I'm seeing Matt's. 
kind of like a stamp of approval for a job well done. Okay, these are gonna be our, our experimental ones. Matt, I said, how am I gonna know which way I'm going? He said, well, you just draw an arrow. So he helped me with that. So on this side, we're just, we don't have very many of these, but we're gonna plant this little, the one I was said is almost, and Matt said the same thing. We could call it the paint bean. Looks like a paint horse. It's mystery Cherokee bean. So we're gonna, I saved a few of them just in case something happens to these. We're gonna plant those on this side. And then um, going this way, we're gonna plant the, uh, let's see, what have I done with it? Oh, there it is. So I've already lost it, the case knife ones. So these she got from, I see her little note. Uh, Johnny Shields, and he was born and raised in Nantahala. I met Johnny, he's very nice. He grows them as we do, case knife bean, heavy yield, big long string runner bean. That sounds like what Matt likes. Mm -hmm. And that's what they look like. That's a pretty bean. That's one looks like you could let grow and use for a dried bean too. I mean, you could use any bean for a dried bean if you wanted to, but that's what that reminds me of. So we're gonna plant them going that way. So this one is the um, runner bean, Shelly bean, lazy wife from Cherokee, North Carolina from the reservation, it says. So uh, they're kind of um, not, they're a different shape, but they've kind of got that speckledy look. But then it's interesting that some of them are white. Oh my goodness, aren't they pretty though? Prettiest beans ever. So we're gonna plant them on this part and then plant the preacher beans on the other. Where should I go? Be right there. Mm -hmm. We don't have as many of them, so I'm gonna stop right there for them. I'm gonna put our thing. And then we'll, we'll see what the preacher bean looks like. And this one was from Silva, North Carolina. It's a pole bean again. Oh, there's a little, let's see what she says about them. I love the little notes. These are very old beans from Silva, North Carolina. Bears very, very well, tender, and have strings. They are called preacher beans, don't know why. If you like um, half runner bean, these are for far better. So far better than white half runners, wow. Let's look at them. So they're just a white bean. We'll plant some of those. I'll hold her back. So it feels good to get those two long rows done. And I'm so excited about those beautiful beans that Debbie shared with us, so excited. So back here, this is kind of where our spring garden stuff was and still have some onions. I have radishes that have went to seed that need to be pulled up. And then I have my carrots. Carrots are doing, looking good. Uh, it's not an entire row, but at least there's some of them that look like they're gonna uh, actually make carrots. So I'm excited about that. But the last two rows I planted were beets, Nothing, not a, not one come up, I don't think. So uh, we're gonna, and since that's already kind of prepared, we're gonna plant some beans in there. We're gonna plant some of our bush beans. So I've got our, I've already got our little things wrote. But we're gonna do the yonts bean, which is one that our friend Brian Lambert shared with us many years ago. We're gonna plant some of them. This is about all the seed that we have left. So we need to, need to definitely grow some to save some seed. And it's a bean that we really like. And then the other one, let's see what it looks like, is a bush bean that Debbie shared with me. Joanne Sutton is from her, Daz. Uh, I think that was her nickname. So it just looks like a little, it's just little white seeds, little white bean seeds. So we're gonna, we're gonna plant them back there. And I'm tempted to, uh, maybe with the Yonts beans, plant two rows. Probably go ahead and pull up these radishes and plant some right there too. So next up is our okra. I did remember last night to soak it overnight. So they've all been soaked. I've got them separated there. The majority of what we'll plant is the Jing orange that we like so much. But we're gonna, <clears throat> we're gonna try this one, Baby Bubba Hybrid that Shirley Williams sent us. So I'm gonna write me a one for that one. And then also we're gonna try, I'm not gonna mark the Jing orange since we'll 
do these two together and the rest of it will know what it is, is this one from Wayne and Vicki. We're gonna do, I'm just gonna call it Wayne and Vicki. So, we'll see. And I said that I'd never soaked it before in one video, but now that I think about it, it seems like maybe one year I did manage to soak it, but most years I don't. I think I'm going to, and then it's the day, and then we just plan it. But I did remember uh, last night, right before bed, and I run in and had them all soaking in water. So we'll see, see how that works. Faster, yeah, so it should come up faster for us. Comes up faster means produces faster, which mm -hmm. is what we like. Matt's been hoeing down here in the our spring vegetables, and he's got them looking much, much better. I'd let the weeds take them over. You can see the row of onions, and then we've got some radishes in these other three rows. That one row was beets, again, that didn't come up. All different varieties of beets. This was just not my year for beets. I usually grow them really well, but something about this year just didn't, didn't go my way, and that's the life of a gardener that happens. But I'm going to go ahead and pull up the radishes that are left here. We've been eating them, but I'm going to pull up the rest of them, and I can uh, I can probably eat them all myself. But if not, I'll share with Granny and Miss Cindy. And that way, we can go ahead and plant some other things in these rows that's already kind of healed up for us. And I think we're going to put our squash and zucchini, our summer squash, like yellow squash. We like crookneck and straight neck. We usually grow both. And then uh, zucchini. We'll probably put those right here. So I've got a few few radishes. This is a different kind that I've grown before. Someone sent me the seeds and I've really enjoyed them. You can kind of see they're not totally red. They're kind of white and red. They've been really good. While I was gone, I was collecting. You might wonder why I was putting the weeds in the bucket. I'm going to take those to my chickens. It's got weeds and then some radishes. Sometimes radishes don't actually develop on the, don't develop a radish. They just stay like kind of a there's no, no bulb on the bottom of it, no radish. So those I'm gonna to feed to the chickens too. Now lots of people love to eat radish greens. They adore them and you can eat them, they're edible, but we just don't care for them as much as we do for kale and spinach and some of the other things we grow. But our chickens love them, so it's kinda of like we're still eating them. They just gotta go through the chickens and produce the eggs first. Since these rows are already kinda of built up for us, we're just gonna uh, plant right on top of them for the squash and the zucchini and we're going to do two rows of squash and we'll it'll be the early summer crook neck and the straight neck we, the yellow squash we like both of those I don't even I like both of them equally and then we'll do the one row of zucchini and I'm going to do black beauty that's we like that we usually grow that so I'm not going to mark any of that but I am going to mark this one that Karen Allen sent us we're going to try it and it's Ford Hook zucchini so I've never never tried it before so I'll mark that one just so we know one half of the row is of the zucchini is the Ford Hook and one row one half row is um, what we always grow which is Black Beauty and when it comes to growing zucchini and squash Pap always mounded up, put his in mounds. And that's what we do most of the time. But there has been years that we did them in rows like this and it works good too. It's just personal preference what you want to do. Usually if I did it in mounds, I would do maybe three seeds in each mound um, to give in case, you know, it's like the old saying, one for the crow, one for the, uh, I can't remember all the little saying, I know you know it though, and then one for yourself basically. One for the Lord, one for the crow, one to grow, something like that. Anyway, so that's usually what we would do. For these, since we're gonna do them in rows, I will just plant one every, probably every, I don't know, 10 or 12 inches, something like that. Now squash and zucchini do get really large. They always get larger than I imagine when I'm planting the little seed. But they kind of fight each other out for space and, and generally do pretty good for us. And we, since we have such a small area to plant in, we most of the time err on the side I do of overcrowding. It's easy to overcrowd when you, um, you know, in the spring when the garden's open and there's not much there and you're like, I've got all this room. And then by July, you're like, oh my goodness, why did I plant that so close together? But um, it usually works out in the end. So Matt's gonna get me some holes in there. He went and cut him a little 
limb out of the wood so he could poke some holes for me. Can you almost taste the squash fried squash, Dad? I'll be glad when I do. With side meat and go with it. That's one of my favorite things, the side meat. Everybody says the key, I know. It is good though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The best stuff's ever been. It's right up there at deer tenderloin. So we got the squash and the zucchini planted. Now we're on to the winter squash and some melons. I put some melons in the back too and some winter squash, but up here is where we love to put winter squash. So the watermelons, I'm gonna do some sugar babies, some moon and stars, and this one that uh, Shelly sent me that's supposed to be really good. Uh, so I'm gonna try those, that was those. Then for the, but the, winter squash i'm going to do some butternut squash long island cheese pumpkin i tried that one before but it was just not in a good place and it didn't produce so i want to try it again i have the green and striped cushaw that we love and of course candy roasters and i think both of those raymond and gretchen sent me those i'm going to try those and i have my favorite chambers creek pumpkin that i always grow and then also this is a little i mean this is one from debbie cow pumpkin so i'm gonna see what see what it's like i'll plant a few more in the back where we built the bed behind the greenhouse i think the bees are after matt as always <laughs> And the watermelons and cantaloupes I'll put back there, I will actually grow on the cattle panels and let them grow up the cattle panels. So now I better get to helping Matt do these hills. Right here in the very front, I hope that we can plant some flowers down through there. I think that would be pretty. I usually don't plant flowers in this part, although I do have some that self-seed and come up every year. I think they're, I think they're Cosmos. I'm not sure what they are but they're pretty. Sound alive, Dad. Woo! How's that? <laughs> Better. I do like Ric Flair. If you're gonna be the man, you gotta beat the man. <laughs> so, as Matt does his Ric Flair, uh, Im impression. <laughs> we just went in and had some dinner, so we've got revived. So now we're ready to tackle the, the backyard, and I don't think it'll be as difficult as the front was. There's not as much of it, so it shouldn't be. So now what are we going to put back here? We still got to do our um, cucumbers. Cucumbers, yeah. Let's see if I can find Peas. them. Peas. More beans. Those are the male ones. Are cucumbers. Need to get to doing it while that cloud's over. Yeah, while we've got some cloud cover. You want to do the, you want to swap sides and do the cucumbers on that side? I don't care. What or do you want to do? let's don't do as, because we planted melons up there. Let's just plant some, like one little row of, I mean, half of a panel of cantaloupes. Okay. So, and then we'll do cucumbers on all three, because you want some of those. You want lots of cucumbers. You want some of those dill pickles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I only did four four quarts last year. Yeah, it was not exactly enough. Yeah, which we didn't. I didn't know if I would like them or not, but best ever dill pickles ever. I'll put the link to Justin Metcalf in the description. So okay, we'll do do those, and we're gonna do the so for the male ones. We'll just do. Maybe we could do one of each of those, or maybe two of each of those. We've got lots of different cucumbers. The silver slicer, those is what we liked the best last year, wasn't it? Once, I mean, we've grown them, what, two years maybe? Uh -huh. And they just do so good. They really produce and do well, but I want to try some of these others too. Okay, ready? Second, round second. How do you say it? Second round? Round two. <laughs> round two, yeah. Let's go. Okay. 
This is the new ground that we developed last year. We made a bed back here for the first time and we grew some winter squash. It didn't do all that great. It did produce some squash though and some pumpkins, but it wasn't the best. But I'm hoping after this is the second year of adding some compost to it, that this year it'll, it'll do better than it did last year. So Matt's just gonna mound me up some places and I'm gonna plant some more winter squash back here. Corey's been running errands for me all morning, but she's back now, and so she's gonna, she can write. This will make it go faster. She can write while I actually plant. And I think, let me go through in here and see what we're gonna do. What well, you gonna plant back here? This is gonna be winter squash back here. Oh. So we're gonna do the, might do a green and white striped down here. Mrs. Amerson's sweet meat. I want to see about that. Huh? Plenty of worms in there. Plenty of worms. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, I've already planted all those up front. Can you tell me what, boss? Okay. They are they? Yeah. They like that compost, I guess. Hmm. Might even put us. I don't really want to do all of these. I'm, gonna, I'm in a conundrum, Dad. Uh-oh. I don't like it when the little ladies is in a conundrum. Yeah. There's nine, so you could do three groups of three. It sure yeah. is a pitiful little mound at first. And <laughs> I don't know, but it's okay. Um, so, right, well, I'm going to do four. This is going to get four of them, and then I'll think about what to do. Is this, actually I only want to do one of this one because I swear I planted this last year and it was a spaghetti squash. And it's not that I'm, I'm not against spaghetti squash. I would just rather have something else. But I'm curious, or, or better yet, one of us get our phones and look it up and see what Mrs. Amerson is. I don't know where my phone's at laying over there somewhere, Corey. <laughs> oh, you got one. Mrs. Say Amerson's. All. Oh, it, it, is. it says it is. Yeah, so it's not it. That's why maybe last year I just planted the wrong one. So let's try it again. Okay. So, yeah, write that one on one. And then this one, sweet meat. Okay, I thought I had these in my pack, but somehow yesterday when I was gathering them, I didn't get them. But I'm going to also do a Seminole pumpkin and then the little small sugar pumpkins. So Corey's going to make me some for for those. Are you rowing, Dad? I'm practicing. Matt's practicing his rowing. Okay. That's good, Dad. You need to build up them muscles for the kayak. So we're getting there. We're getting ever closer to being done. Then we can go down at Granny's and do hers. This little cattle panel here is where we've been doing our rattlesnake beans since we preferred the greasies for so long. We, we planted those for so long. Um, until Matt decided over the last year, he said, you know, we should really plant the rattlesnake beans. The majority of them, of our beans, should be the rattlesnake beans because they produce uh, so unbelievable. So that's why we put them up front. So back here on this little trellis, I have some my grapevines growing on this end, but until it completely takes over, I've been planting in between them. So we're going to do the Cades Cove Greasy. This is one from Debbie. It says... Um, and Debbie's at Bryson Farm Supply. Very tasty and prolific, bears very well. And that's a greasy, so we're gonna try it. And then we're gonna put the white beans that uh, a subscriber shared with me last year that he called Grammy's beans. We're gonna put them back here too. So really the only greasy beans we'll be, we'll be growing this year is these. So it'd be a, a departure for us, but I'm so excited about all those other varieties that I that we're going to grow uh, you know maybe we'll fall in love with a lot of them and we're going to have plenty of beans if they do well so Corey's planting the Cades Cove greasy for me let's see them Corey those are pretty little beans mm -hmm. they're slick okay on this part we're going to plant these look how beautiful so pretty look at those colors so these are the old-timey speckled butter beans from john sullivan thank you so much john i can't wait i hope they grow that well 
I mean, grow really good for me because they're so beautiful. of all of them maybe thinking of which ones I've planted to miss any hmm. those look great maybe I'll do one more right there on this end of it, we're just gonna do the purple hull peas. We really like those too. <laughs> those were old timey speckled butter beans. can move the giant head of cabbage. Is it growing too? Uh, Want me to pitch it? And then the eggshells. Yeah, that's where I've added compost. It's like planting in a landfill when you plant here on this hill. Yeah, I'm bad to bury stuff. I see a potato though. It's not a potato, it's a dang eggshell. Oh, shell. I thought it was a potato. <laughs> oh gosh, thought it was a potato. <laughs> Okay, let's see. I see, Corey, you got your marker again. Feel any potatoes? Uh -uh, I'm stepping in stuff. Yeah. All right. I don't know exactly where to put that. I'll put it there for now. Can we see? Can we see that? These kind of look like the others. So a little different though, a little bigger. Purple. Oh, they're so pretty. I guess at least that many. And this one will be the why my Cherokee. So many of these come from the same general area. I, I know they're bound some of them be the same, although these look different. So these are just brown. Those are beautiful. That's all there is in that one. So I guess we should just plant them. Well, maybe we'll see. My potato, my volunteer potato is in the way. Is that, a, is that some good luck you're doing there? Good mojo? That's some, what you call pea drumming. Pea, drum. pea planting drumming. Oh, pea planting drumming. Huh? So these are the Holstein pea. Pea in his little house. Well, look at them. They look like a Holstein. Aren't those beautiful? Mm -hmm. Wow. Some pretty little peppers already. Those peppers will turn purple. That one's already turning. bed done. How many more we like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> no, not that many. 
Not that many. We about got it licked. And grannies will be super easy. Okay, we're up to now our next long uh, raised bed that we put here. You can see we've got some onions that we planted. These were strawberry onions from Satterfields. And then I put a marigold in each end of them. So in this one, we're going to put some Mississippi pink eye peas. It's like a bush pea. Me and Matt adored them last year. We, we grew them for the first time last year and just fell in love with them. They were so good as I dropped one on the ground there. We eat them. We eat them. As fast as they would grow, we would eat them. We really loved them. So in this raised bed, we're gonna kind of half it. And I'm gonna do some bush cucumbers cause we can never have enough cucumbers. And then in the other side, I'm gonna plant some more lettuce. Just another, we're still enjoying our lettuce from the spring, but just another succession of lettuce. Head for nothing. <laughs> That's a good look, Dad. In this bed, when I was looking through all my seeds, I found a whole bag of onions that we got from Debbie, and I had not planted them, but thankfully they were they're okay, so I'm gonna plant them in here. We've already got some in the front, but I'm gonna add to it. have too many onions. <laughs> nice try, man. Did you lock it? Huh? Uh, did you just throw them? Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention. You're nice trying, try, to, trying to tease me. I'm putting them up the wrong way. Yeah. like Katie she said she just started putting hers in different places and she's planting them the other day because Katie ain't exactly right so I think we can all agree yeah. <laughs> she walks to the beat of her own drum for sure that's cool huh? it is cool she's a non-conformist makes me proud I kind of like that myself I don't know if y'all have noticed. Oh, you. Hey. Well, we did it. 
We accomplished our goal. Planted our garden and Granny's. And I can feel it. But I'm so happy, so glad we got it done. So we deserve a popsicle. Matt's got the melty one again. Bloodshot. Bloodshot. Hey, mine's real melty. It's like ice cream. Oh, yours is melted. Corey's is really melted. <laughs> Notice everyone, I'm wearing my Michigan shirt. Yeah. Um, everybody likes that Michigan shirt, don't they? It's, Love that. Well, I just wear it because it's like the only all cotton shirt I have, and I keep saying I gotta get me a Georgia Bulldog shirt that's all cotton, and I just haven't. Mm. But someone sent me a Hawkeye shirt, which I am gonna wear. Can I see wear it? So we planted every. We planted how many beds did we leave? We planted the beds on the bank, except we left three. 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 So part of the reason is we kind of run out of steam, but other reason is that way it'll give us a place to plant if we remember something we didn't plant or if we decide we want more of something or like a succession planting. So we left those. And then at Granny's we planted cornfield beans, red uh, zipper hull peas, peanut beans, she had peanut beans. We planted some squash and some cucumbers and some zucchini. And then Granny had been saving her potato peelings, so we planted a whole row of potato peelings. So we'll see how that turns out. Was that all we planted? No, her house. I think so. Yeah. And then she had Matt trim on her plum tree while we were there. Got that accomplished. This is not the right time of the year to trim on plum trees, but it's so overgrown. Yeah, and she's it, been, this and should she's, have been done four or five years and ago, and I tried to, yeah. and she didn't want me to, so when she said go, I yeah, went. Well, yeah, when she said, you wouldn't have time to cut some of my, we were like, yes, we will. Why and do you have to wait till a certain time to trim? Well, it's better to wait till a certain time about the, right, but, down, yeah. but that plum tree, like a lot of plum trees in our areas, our area, it blooms early and then it gets bit so that's what happened to that one this year so there's no plums on it not one last year was i think probably the most plums she had she was constantly trying to give them to people i mean she probably had what maybe maybe 14 or 15 something like that but anyway so when she said would you would you like to cut it matt was like yeah i would like to have cut it four years ago but yes could have right down our next to the ground if you'd let me i know uh, So that'll definitely help the garden though, help a lot more sunshine get to it. And make it easier to walk under there to pick beans. So we've had a very productive day. Mm -hmm. It's good Corey asked that question about why you wouldn't want to cut. This is not the optimum time to cut. Um, things like plum trees or grapevines or anything like that, any kind of fruit trees. There's so many questions like that, and we're not experts by no means. Like I was thinking while we were planting, some people was probably wondering, well, how deep do you plant it? Well, almost if you buy a packet of seeds, it always on the back will have directions about how, how deep you should plant your seeds. And after you kind of get the hang of it, you really don't think of it as much. Now, there are some seeds, you, little teeny tiny ones that you just need to put on the top of the ground and not cover them at all. But for most seeds, thinking of vegetables like um, all the things we planted today, they do need to be covered. So you can look on the back of your packet of seeds. And of course, you can do research, and I'm sure you'll find somebody that tells you exactly each thing. You know, you can find like a chart or something and, and it'll tell you for okra seed this deep, for bean seed this deep. But we've been doing it so long that we just kind of kind of plant them. And the amazing thing about seeds are they want to grow. So, you know, you could really drive yourself crazy being super technical and like measuring the depth and doing all that. But I don't really think it's necessary. Do you, Matt? No. <clears throat> I've got a good small delicate uh, 
Appalachian answer for that. What? If somebody wants to know how deep you plant something, you plant it the same depth you did last year. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not very <laughs> helpful. No, not very helpful to people that's never planted. But the back of the seed packet should tell you. But again, um, be encouraged that seeds just really want to grow. So if you plant them a little too deep or a little too shallow, a lot of times that's still they're still going to grow and, yeah. and produce and be fine. It's, it's um, growing a garden is just like anything else. It can be there's so much information out there. It can be really intimidating. But um, if you just know that that seed really wants to grow, or even if it's a plant that you're planting that it really wants to grow, and you kind of nurture it and protect it from the you know whatever it is trying to eat it and give it some good soil and maybe some some type of fertilizer and make sure it has enough water it it will take care of itself most of the time yeah when the ground gets the right temperature and it begins to germinate it's going to grow mm -hmm. and if it has to grow three or four inches up through the dirt before it gets top it'll do it'll it. do it yeah. yeah so you think i always like to think about the volunteers like we have several little volunteer tomatoes we have them every year it's this little tommy toe match cherry it comes back have it in my flowers and back here in the uh, one of the beds and that, so that little tomato fell off last year one, one that we didn't see fell off laid on the ground we scratched up the ground of course it was cold and you know a dog might have come by and, and scratched around animals might have we added stuff on top of it like matt's saying we added a whole layer of compost never thinking about the seed laying there and then somehow this spring they sprouted and come up and they're probably that high you know six inches high now so that's the amazing an example of the amazing power of seeds i've noticed um in the back behind the greenhouse where we planted some of our uh, winter squash am i dripping corey yeah are you worrying about me mm -hmm. corey's worrying about me dripping um I noticed some sunflowers. I had sunflowers back there last year, so they've dropped off, and so they're coming up. So again, <coughs> we scratched around, dug the weeds out, put more compost on top, and didn't even know the seed was there, yet it's it's growing. So it's just a miracle of seeds. But you can find tons of information about how to plant each seed. If not on the back of the packet, then you can uh, do what you, what you say earlier, ask you the goggle box, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's been something for me. I get sometimes intimidated or overwhelmed with all the information with just starting out, but then I just remember, like you said, seeds just want to grow, and I just plant them and think, well, I just give it a try. And, and you're every, doing good, yeah, right? Everything's come yeah. up, so pretty much. So mm -hmm. it's got to have decent soil, but other than that, yeah. And sometimes not even decent soil. I it's mean, true, yeah. Yeah. Corey was asking us earlier, like when you look at our soil now, it is does look rich and deep and, I mean, nice. And so she was saying... Um, it didn't start that way. No, it didn't. And somehow <laughs> you were saying something about about it growing, about poor soil. But I said, well, you got to remember, Corey, you remember, because you was here to witness it, all the years that we planted stuff that the soil wasn't that great we still grew stuff it might not have been as productive as it is now but we still grew stuff every mm -hmm. year and if we hadn't if we'd tried it like for three years and not grown anything we would have quit i'm right. sure yep but it took us all these years to actually get the soil to look as good as it does so there is hope yep yeah. For your earth, Corey. Yeah. And, I mean, what we've got is all in containers for the most part. And you're starting out with better soil than we did yeah. anyway, so it should come quicker to you. Yeah. And there's some places on the ground, like I was asking about pumpkins, if I could just stick them out on the ground and I could, you know, put some good soil and just see what they do. There's one thing about, about trying stuff like that. If you don't try it, you're sure not going to grow nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't So if try. you try it, you might grow something. You might not, but you might. At least you tried. But if yeah. you don't try, you know you're definitely not going to grow a pumpkin. Right. Right. So. It's true. That's one way to look at it. But boy, it feels good to have it, have it all planted. And to have grannies too. I know she's happy. 
when she called me this morning to ask me what I was going to do today, I said, well, Matt's took off and we're going to plant the garden and we're going we're gonna to plant yours too. She said, oh, that's great. That's wonderful. <laughs> I'm so happy. So when we went down there, she had all our seeds organized, what she wanted, the uh, cornfield beans she'd saved last year and some nice uh, subscriber sent her some corn, uh, cornfield bean seeds, cornfield bean seeds. I can't get cornfield it out. Cornfield beans. And so we planted those too, but she had her, the red hole peas she had saved, her peanut beans she had saved. She had it all, all organized for us, ready to go. So she's super excited to, to have it. She can't really get out there and do much. She tries to though. I seen her, she was having to, getting Corey to carry a table or something and uh, Corey had a hold of one end and she granny had her hoe with it <laughs> hold to the other I was like oh no that granny don't give me this yeah, that don't and then Corey's yeah I can tell Corey's mm -hmm. like and then Corey got the whole it's just really light plastic table got the table granny, moving give me this table you can get hurt. yeah but she's even though she can't get out there like she once could she really enjoys seeing stuff grow mm -hmm. that's just her happy makes her so happy She even got me and Corey to move this little, well, she said, I, if you, Tipper, will you help me move this? And I was like, me and Corey will move it. Mm -hmm. But it was just a, what, about that big, Corey, mm -hmm. I guess, like a little plastic planter for flowers. And she said, if you move it over there under my clothesline, I could put beans in it and let them grow. And then when they get tall enough, I could put them over the clothesline. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to work exactly, but we moved it. So she's funny. She loves green beans. What are you most excited about that we planted today, Matt? <coughs> beans. Beans, yeah. Matt loves green beans, too. I'm excited about all those different and varieties. The peas. But, yeah, I think the peas yeah. is what I'm most excited about. Those peas are just nice. We should, why, we should have been growing them I 20 years ago. I don't know why. We just never did grow them. My gosh, them things are good. Uh, we can credit the uh, nice lady at such as, I don't remember the name of the church, but she's the one that got me to want to grow well, peas. She, she had a bowl of them, didn't she? She had, yeah, a dish of them, them, and they were so delicious. And then she sent them home with me, too, yeah. the rest of them. But she told me, and I was like, next year. And then I even I shared them with Granny, what she sent home, and Granny's the same way. we got to grow peas next year. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know. And they were mixed with butter beans, too, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, they were. My goodness, yeah. that thing's good. So, so last year, we got to enjoy that straight out of our garden, the butter beans and the peas yeah. together, and they were so good so good with that and cornbread oh my goodness that's all you need for a meal a big green onion out of the garden that's good stuff mm -hmm. cucumber and tomato some fried squash wouldn't hurt mm, fried okra yeah it's a feast side meat you getting hungry Corey I'm <laughs> thinking about all of it mm. yeah. Now, if it just come a gentle rain all night and water it all, that'd be great. I don't know when the next, I think this is supposed to be a dry week. So a lot of people ask us if we will water everything we planted and we won't. Not those seeds, we'll just leave them <coughs> there until they, they'll be absorbing some moisture out of the ground. But uh, we'll wait at least a week or so and see if we get rain, wouldn't we? We usually don't water in the seeds. Now, if it was a plant that we were planting, we'll water it for at least three or four days till it kind of takes hold and takes off on its own. There's still moisture in the ground, too. It rained enough Saturday. as water standing in the yard inch deep. So yeah, the that's ground's, true. The ground's moist. The ground's did you hear moist. that, Corey? Yes, yeah, sure yeah, did. a tree fell up there somewhere. Some fell. Yeah, sound like a tree. Can't believe you didn't hear that, Daddy. I heard it, but I thought it was something on Steve's porch down here in Hines. No, it's right up there. there. Might have been one of those beetle pines. Finally fell over. Might have been a hidey behind. Might have been. Oh, man, I've got stuff crusted on my face. I sitting probably here do, like too. I probably do, too. When you work hard, you get dirty. Coconut popsicle? I don't see none. Mm -hmm. It was there. Mm -hmm. These people don't think I don't never clean my face. No. I tell you, like Granny, you ought to always wash your face and comb your hair. True. 
before you go somewhere. You never know who you might run into. Advice from Granny. That was her advice. You ought to always wash your face and comb your hair. Paps was never go home without a full tank of gas because you never know where you might have to go way up in the middle of the night. And in those days, there wouldn't have been many gas stations open here, but I guess today <coughs> you wouldn't have to worry about that. They'd be open. Yeah, my gosh, they just keep putting them up. Yeah. Being prepared. Yep. I guess how you look or if you want to drive either one be prepared for what might happen way yeah, up in the I night. I never let mine get below half tank. Yeah. And when it gets to half tank I fill it up. Just it's just a good habit to yeah, be in. I try to. I've been doing so much running lately though. I actually let my light come on about a week ago. Did you? Yeah. I do that sometimes. Austin's light come on when we were on the way back from Atlanta. Actually, the light came on before we left uh, Macon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to stop. I was like, how much does it say? How many miles, you know, because like the newer stuff will tell you. And it was like 41 miles. I said, yeah, we won't make it back to home yeah. if we don't put gas in it. I think I, the forerunner, I think it was about 40 miles. I don't know what my car is. It probably tells you too. I don't know where to look though. Yeah, it's a little too high tech. It's like my truck. I don't. I, don't I can't know. work none of that stuff. It's and got think, buttons and yeah. it's got a screen and it tells you stuff yeah. and it'll show you the weather and I don't know how to do uh, none of it. The forerunner didn't <clears> tell you anything, but I think we read it one time in the book or something, and I, so I always had that in my mind if I run out, if I if the light come on in it, how far I could go back to make it back to town to get gas. Thirty miles on fumes. I, I hate that crap. Yeah. Hate it. But what do you do? gripe I guess mm -hmm. all I can do but mm -hmm. I don't like it I get mine ain't right. even got a key I know and I really don't like that I know you need to swindle Katie out of hers I've been trying to for time. a year look at that little bird there is that a robin it's coming over here by us yeah. I want to get like a fully <clears throat> nice taken care of restored 2004 runner <laughs> that's what I want my next car to be you know, look, the main thing is, is I'll drive mine as long as I can because I don't yeah, want another car I plan car to drive mine until I can't, it. until it stops somewhere. I mean, until I just can't. I'm not I hope it lasts me the rest of my life. You think it will? Probably not, but maybe. Depending on how long I live. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, I aim to live to be 100, so. Yeah. Okay. By the time you're 100, they're going to have just cars that drive themselves. They already have that now. may not be. By the time I'm 100, maybe back on horses and wagons. That wouldn't be bad. That'd be all right. Yeah. It's like May 5. Everyone will be provided with an AI chauffeur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All of, you know, they'll all be in the form of Katie. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Shut up and sit down. Yeah, sit down and shut up. We'll be there in a minute. <laughs> we'll be there when I say we're there. <coughs> mm -hmm. I have to make a few stops. Just be quiet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> stop at the rocks. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta pick rocks, up some huh? rocks and I gotta Oops. stop at the creek and go by the post office and say Bobby and whatever. Go get some little Debbies. Yeah. Oh, your daddy's found a new little Debbie that he likes. Oh, yeah. And then talked yeah. about the little Debbies. Yeah, I'll be, I'm gonna get some of them multiple boxes then. I ain't been I ain't been eating that sort of stuff much. But uh, that's just so good. Yeah. Well we were trying to remember Corey when back in the days when Katie liked the chocolate cream was that jelly, jelly cream, jelly Debbie? You liked some kind of like it was coconut, coconut or Hawaiian. I thought it was pineapple or something. No it was coconut. Yeah, it was coconut. coconut. I thought it was and it pineapple. It had the little jelly thing inside it too, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. They quit and making them. And then they quit them. making them. Yeah. I thought, and then they did make, it was a pineapple one and you liked it. There was a little apple turnover that uh -huh. I liked and then they stopped making that too. Oh gosh. Yeah, all you got to do is like it and they'll quit it. <laughs> so uh, back in that, in those days, Corey and Katie uh, and all of, I mean, as you can tell, not me so much, but Corey and Katie and Matt and, and Paul, it's also like that. They like to go on all the time, so they're always being silly. So they started, uh, they would do like spoof songs, you know, make fun of a song but change the words to it and 
we were down at Paul's uh, picking and grinning on one Sunday, and somehow Paul and Corey and Katie started being silly about the song Jolene, Dolly Parton song. So they come up with a spoof about Little Debbie's about it, and it was hilarious. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, something. Yeah. yeah I've got the words wrote yeah. down to that somewhere. Well, there's a video, so I'll, link, I'll put it in the description below so you can go watch it. It's really hilarious. It's funny. Uh, so that was... I don't remember how, who come up with it, if it was you or Paul or Katie. Probably Paul and, and Katie. And then for Christmas that year, Corey and Katie come up with, like, solidified all the lyrics, the, the verses, and the, and then filmed it for Paul for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. That is funny. Lord. We don't buy Little Debbie's no more. Well, Matt does now that he's found the <coughs> peanut butter one. Well, I'm going to buy them. Yeah. I, I don't, I ain't bought none yeah. and I don't know when. But. Granny still, every once in a while, I have me get her some raisin cream pies on their grocery tick pies. list. <laughs> tick pies. Yeah. The things look like they got the little raisin pieces look like ticks. Oh, gosh. We call them tick pies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I think Granny, I've heard you say that before. Yeah. Granny used to always have the oatmeal cream pies. I eat those at her house growing up. Yeah. Well, these peanut butter ones are kind of like that. Yeah. But they're thicker. And they got peanut butter filling in them. They are good. Mm -hmm. Austin loves Nutty Buddy, so I get those for Yeah, them. I like them. Yeah, every once in a while, Granny will want those too, but not much. Mostly just the tick pies. <coughs> a whole lot of times, yeah. to keep from eating so much junk like that, I'll go in the kitchen and get a big spoonful of honey. I do that sometimes. To just give me the, the, the sugar. You get the sweetness, get but the you sweetness, don't eat the And then not only eat the junk, yeah. yeah. Oh, and that, that works. Yeah, dates work. I mean, Corey like oh, dates. dates. We eat dates like that. I really like dates. Especially if you dip them in dates. almond butter. I don't mind the taste of them. It's just like it's like the, eating the road tar. <laughs> it sticks to every well, tooth in your head. Look, here's the thing about dates. I am incredibly picky with my dates. I only like them if they're soft. If they get even, I can tell by looking at them. If they look like they got wrinkles, forget it. Yeah, and when they got the wrinkles like that, you bite into them and they stick everywhere in your mouth. And you want them soft. When they're yeah. soft, they're like gooey. I don't mind them if they're hard or soft. I like them. I just don't eat them. I like them with almond butter, but they hurt me if I eat them like that. They feel like they blow me up. It makes me feel incredibly bloated, so I don't, I don't like eat them as much as I used to. Almond butter, but I just eat I them by themselves. Just the uh, two or three dates. It's like they're so sweet. It's like eating candy almost. Yeah. You know what I saw? I've been seeing a lot of like really interesting recipes, and I saw people they take dates and they make all kinds of versions of this, just like a big date, you know, that's pitted. If not, got to pit on and open it up and then you can put stuff on the inside, kind of close it back and like dip it in chocolate. Mm -hmm. So What do they put inside it, like uh, peanut butter or whatever? Some people do peanut butter, oh. just lots of different stuff. Mm -hmm. I even seen in this recipe that this lady put pistachio butter. Mm -hmm. Did you know that was a thing? I didn't. Mm -hmm. Then she put rose petals on it and I was like, what? <laughs> huh. I don't know about this. Maybe mm -hmm. just peanut butter and chocolate. I don't know, I just <laughs> like the day. <laughs> rose petals? Did it was eat? beautiful, yeah. You can eat, yeah, you can, they're edible. It would probably, to me, would probably be good because I like the taste of lavender, like lavender honey or yeah. whatever, so that's not really something that I'm going to go to the trouble to have all the time, though, so. Mm -hmm. Problem? No, I just was hearing stuff back there. Now you're hearing stuff. That's like a ghost. Train. We got a ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you spending time with us today as we got our garden planted. It feels so good to say that. Me and Matt both been feeling bad about being so far behind, and we want to know all that great stuff we're going to get to eat and put up for our families out here growing and while it's sun shining and the warm weather's here. So it feels really good, doesn't it? It does. As always, we really appreciate you stopping by to help us celebrate Appalachia. I see these other recipes where people take like Greek yogurt yeah. and uh, just lay it flat and put stuff in it and freeze it and then it's like bark. Hmm. What do you call that? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, like, it's a dessert. A, um, like people at Christmas people melt, or melt uh, yeah, white chocolate or whatever well, you can and do put that. nuts and stuff in it. You can do it. that with chocolate. For one second I thought that was the chime of a gigantic clock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm losing it. Kind it kind of sounded like a train. It was like the pitch of it. Or something. I reckon why they're blowing at each other. I don't know. Maybe to... 
like just let's get out of here. Yeah. Don't give her shift distended. Yeah, maybe that was the mill whistle. Yeah. Oh, that's sad. But I did see the Canton mayor said that the mill, they were going to keep the whistle. Because I'm thinking it's going to be, it's getting close to closing, right? In June mm -hmm. Yeah, but he said the, the, the whistle would continue to blow because it becomes such part of life in Canton. People, like, do their day by it, you know. Yep. Sad times. All good things got to come to an end. I don't know what they're going to do with that thing. I don't know what they're going to do with the machinery in it and all that stuff. They're going to take it out or just lock the doors? Or? Probably lock the doors and it'll you'll be seeing Josh on abandoned to it. I don't know. I mean, there's millions of dollars worth of stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, somebody would buy it. I just don't know. I don't know all the good things. It's working go there, son. It's, it's fascinating to watch. I never got to go on a tour of the place. I didn't either. It's a fascinating place. I mean, it really is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Reckon they're through? Is that them leaving? The uh, paving? Yeah. I'm sure they've been there. If, they, if it's a state, they're through. I know. Well, it ain't a state. It's the... Somebody they've contracted. Contracted out. But what was the trust? What did they say? Uh-oh. Was that your phone? Yeah. <laughs> Russell something. Okay. Russell something. Um, and then they'll have to come back and paint lines on it, won't they? Yeah. Oh, Corey said they were doing hemp hill this morning. Mm-hmm. Hemp they, hill. They've had a busy day. Road by the folk school. What else? They're doing a bunch Which of Which one by the folk school? Or? After you pass the cross from the crash shop. Oh, okay. That little one. Yeah, it goes down and by the river. What else are they doing? They're doing a bunch of them. Reckon they'll do pin hook? Probably. Be next going that way. Probably. What's the opposite one? Floyd stock up. They have to watch out for the mechanics when they do that. Yeah. Uh, can we just have a little bit of that tar? We're gonna smoke it. Yeah. <laughs> just go walk behind the truck and get high off the fumes. Wonder how tall this will have a shoulder like where they cleaned out those ditches. Mm -hmm. Just be careful not run out of the road. Don't be, don't be driving and texting like you use like a little teenage girl like you usually do. I do like not drive do. and text. And I putting don't up do your profile that. and I don't this is my mood and I don't do none give me that. likes. And I don't do none of that. I don't. Move I can't, even, I can't even, even text time. hardly while I'm sitting down. You can. I seen you thumbing it like a little girl <laughs> the other day. I can't do that. But I can't do it on the driving. I don't try either. <clears throat> I, I, too afraid of wrecking. Right. I, I would never do that. I'd be too scared. Cook a pancake and drive. <laughs> do I have like a hunchback or a weird looking neck? No, oh, except when you do that. I just feel like no matter how much I put my shoulders it's back. It's because we're I'm all in the habit of... Turn away your hideous. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is how I'm comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks it's nice. awful. Yeah. My yeah. posture is terrible. We'll get you fitted for one of them things that they put on people that... People wear those under their clothes like that make them... Turtle keep shell. Them. <laughs> you can run your head down and out of it. Did you know that there's a hawk called a gimbal hawk? And I've seen a video where this guy's holding it and the guy moves his hand and the hawk never moves its head. But when he moves his hand, head, it's like the hawk's going. Mm -hmm. But it's his body. And they call it a gimbal head because its head's like a gimbal. Hmm. It's really cool. It's nice. All right, let's Are we go. Done? We're done. Let's I go got there. stuff to do. I'm gone. That's a wrap. Right. Oh, we need a thumbnail. <laughs> Wait, I got some of my Sharpie down. <laughs> Elf. <laughs> I'm just kidding.